magnetic circuits. So magnetic circuits this is actually one of my favorite topics because once you get the hang of these, they're really easy. Uh, there's a really good question in the NCES practice problem uh, or practice exam <clears throat> that a lot of people have trouble with. So anytime you're dealing with magnetic circuits, so here's more of a physical diagram of what your transformer looks like, right? Here's your iron core. Here's your primary winding. Here's the number of turns on your primary winding. Here's your secondary winding. Uh, here's the number of turns on your secondary winding. That's the primary voltage applied. That's the secondary voltage. Here's your primary current drawn into that primary winding, your secondary current supplied by that secondary winding. And here's your flux, right? <clears throat> Your flux is what's allowing that uh, electromagnetic induction, right, for the voltage in coil one to induce that current in coil two. So this is a physical diagram. This is more of an electrical circuit representation. Anytime you're dealing with a magnetic diet or a magnetic circuit, <clears throat> you're dealing in units of MMF or magnetomotive force flux or Weber's, right, and reluctance. So let's look at everyone's favorite formula, right, Ohm's law. So here's our circuit, or I'm sorry, here's our formula for magnetic circuits. Look how much it looks like Ohm's law. We can remodel these variables from this magnetic circuit and set up the problem just like a circuit. And we can solve it essentially using Ohm's law. So instead of magnetomotive force, or instead of voltage, right, we've got magnetomotive force. Instead of current, we've got our flux. And instead of impedance, we've got our reluctance. So normally, if we're dealing with Ohm's law, we've got V plus or minus, right? Here's our current in this loop. And here's our impedance. So anytime we have to work a magnetic circuit problem. We can just set it up this way. So here's our magnetomotive force, right? In the unit of ampere turns, just like voltage in a circuit. Here's our flux, right? Linking the primary and secondary winding. Notice how it loops just like our current, right? Flux in the unit of Weber's. And here's our reluctance, right? Reluctance acts just like impedance. <clears throat> so let's do a quick example, and we'll try out this calculator again. I think I worked out the bugs from last time, but if not, I've got my uh, TI right next to me as a backup. <clears throat> so let's start with a word problem. We've got a diagram. First thing we're gonna do is we're going to draw a circuit right? Model these magnetic circuit parameters as circuit parameters. Solve it just like we would solve a circuit with Ohm's law. <clears throat> See how it comes out. You guys ready? So the question says, the core shown below, that's this guy, has equal widths along all, all parts, right? With each foot of core length equal to 2.5 inverse Henry's. So for every foot in your core, we've got a reluctance of 2.5 2.5 Henry's, excuse me. Question asks, solve for the total flux, right? Solve for the total flux in Weber's circulating in the core if A equals 2 feet, B equals 2 feet, C equals 0 0.5 feet, And the reluctance of the air gap is four inverse Henry's. And there's a total of 10 ampere turns across the transformer windings. Is this already starting to look like a circuit to you? In other words, it's almost like we have voltage, we have impedance, now we just gotta solve for current. So before we start, the problem said, how many feet of each core length is equal to 2.5 inverse Henry's? One, right? So we've got to go from A, B, and C. We've got to multiply the feet by 2.5, right? Every foot of core length equals 2.5 inverse Henry's. So these aren't reluctance values. 
that's just the distance, right? Two feet, two feet, two feet, half a foot, half a foot. But we do have the air gap in reluctance. So let's see, let's say reluctance A is going to be two feet times 2.5 inverse Henry's per foot, okay? Is, let's see, five inverse Henry's. We can say our B is going to be the same, right? Our B is two feet long. The core has a value of 2.5 inverse Henry's per foot. So our B is equal to the same, five inverse Henry's. And last, C, what's the length of C? Half a foot times the same core value of 2.5 inverse Henry's per foot. That comes out to, let's see, 1.5, 1 1.25 inverse Henry's. All right, <clears throat> you guys ready to model this as a circuit? So first step, we're gonna show, here's a voltage source, right? Really it's magnetomotive force, but we're gonna draw it like a voltage source. Next, here's A, okay, here's our, our B branch. Don't worry, I'll check, um, I'll check the values right after we draw this. I see some of you getting my attention in the chat. So here's B, followed by C, followed by the air gap, followed by C again. And down here, followed by B. All right, so let's fill in the values. What is our magnetomotive force? Ah, was that it? I had a V. As soon as I said magnetomotive force. So what was our magnetomotive force? F equals 10 ampere turns. What was A? A is two feet times 2.5 is five inverse Henry's. B is also five inverse Henry's. C is 1.25 inverse Henry's. And the problem gave us the air gap as four inverse Henry's. Problem asks for what is the total flux circulating in the core. So notice, treat it just like Ohm's law, right? I equals to V over Z is the same thing as flux equals magnetomotive force divided by reluctance. So we can say, and look, I drew a theta. Let me just, there we go. All right, so let's start with down here, flux equals, and go ahead as soon as you get an answer, um, go ahead and give it to me in the chat. Let's see, 0.5, let me just double check. Okay, looking good. Um, go ahead, give it to me in the chat as soon as you get your answer. I'm gonna work it out here on screen with the calculator and uh, we'll compare notes. So our magnetomotive force on the top, I've got 10 ampere turns. The reluctance is five inverse Henry's, that's the first A, plus five inverse Henry's, that's the first B. 1.25 inverse Henry's, that's the first C. Four inverse Henry's, that's the air gap. Let me make some room for the last two terms over here. Okay, so we've got the air gap. We're down here with the second C plus 1.25 inverse Henry's and the last B reluctance down here plus five inverse Henry's. Barely fit it there on screen. All right, let's see. In my calculator, I'm gonna use the fraction button. There we go. Fraction, I've got 10 on top. On the bottom, I've got five plus five plus 1.25 plus four plus 1.25 plus five. Now, 
I'm going to hit enter. And before I look at this answer, anytime I have a big fraction like that, I'm going to look at my calculator. So I want to make sure I didn't make any mistakes, right? 10 on top, 10 on bottom. I'm sorry, 10 on top here, 10 on top. From left to right on the bottom, 5, 5, 125, 5, 5, 125. I'm going to scroll up, hit enter to bring it down so I can see the other half, right? That's just a quick shortcut to see the other half of what was cut off. All right, next I've got 4 plus 125 plus 5. 4 plus 125 plus 5. Good. All right, so I've got a flux of 0. Point, we'll say 651 Webers. All right, how did everyone do? Let's see, RL said, thanks, hundreds of dollars on books, and none of it, none of them explain it this way. Um, yeah, oh, look at that. Four, six, one, or with that almost backwards. Four, six, five, there we go. Four, six, five, Weber's, good. Um, okay, good. Yeah, um, magnetic circuits can be a little challenging, right, if you've never seen it done this way. It's the same relationship as, uh, as Ohm's law. Yeah, sometimes when I'm looking at my calculator, I might write them backwards, it's minor dyslexia. So if, uh, if you see that, go ahead, call me on the chat. You'll never hurt my feelings. All right, this is a little messy. Let me just see if I can move things around a little bit, just so they're more clear on the notes. R A, R B, let's call this R C. All right, any questions on this magnetic circuit? And what we'll do is I've got one more on the next slide. We won't solve it, but we'll just talk about how to set it up and how it's different. Let's look. So before we move to the next slide, who can tell me what's the most common mistake typically made up here? Let's see, air gap or the bottom leg, okay. What else? Air gap, okay. So yeah, the air gap is definitely a big one. Aha, um, William said, not accounting for C twice. I like that. Um, in my experience, most people tend to make a mistake right here on the first reluctance. Now notice that this is all series, right? So this A reluctance can either be on top or it could be on bottom. Make sure you don't forget that one. A lot of people will forget that one They'll get the two Bs, they'll get the two Cs, they'll get the air cap, but they'll miss that first five inverse Henry's. All right, let's look at a slightly more complicated circuit. Who here feels comfortable? If you could, as long as you can get to setting up the circuit, you feel comfortable using the Ohm's law relationship of your magnetomotive force, right? Your magnetic parameters, right? Good. Yeah. We can solve these kind of circuits all day, every day. It's just a matter of getting there first. 